Welcome to Sparks of History, where Jewish history and world history meet. We are extremely pleased and honored to have with us today Rabbi David Goldwasser. Rabbi Goldwasser is a renowned syndicated columnist, daily radio commentator, acclaimed speaker, and best-selling author. Rabbi Goldwasser is the rabbinical leader of Kahal B'nai Yitzchak in Brooklyn, New York, and serves on the faculty of Tour College. Rabbi Goldwasser has received, among other awards, the Agud Israel of America Communal Service Award, uh, the Award for Outstanding Service to the Jewish Community from the Board of Education, Distinguished Rabbinic Leadership Award from the Jerusalem Reclamation Project, the Humanitarian Award from Beth Torah Organization of the Deaf, and the Special Achievement Award from the HEED Prevention Program for Young Adults. Uh, by Goldwasser's popular books include, but are not limited to, The Addicted Soul, It Happened in Heaven, Elul, Living on the Edge, Missing Letters, Freedom of the Soul, Everybody's Favorite, Something to Say, and Starving Souls, and much more. Uh, thank you, Rabbi Goldwasser, for being with us. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be together. I have had the great uh, privilege of seeing some of the uh, various uh, broadcasts of Sparks of History, and I find them fascinating, relevant. You have the finger on the pulse of Klal Yisrael, and it's just enlightening and refreshing to know that Sparks of History is here and can be accessed worldwide. It's a key to Shashem. Thank you very much. Really appreciate those kind words. Um, the times today, uh, uh, what can be said, you know, it, it's it's uh, precarious, it's scary, it's a lot of different things. Um, Uncle Wilson, what, what, how would you view the events today and, and what is the secret behind Jewish survival and how has that manifested itself, especially after October 7th, Simplest Torah? You know, my mind always goes back to the page in the Talmud and the Gemara that talks about what is the whole existence of us Jewish people? What is it based on? So we know, Dover HaMelech came, V'hemidon alachas esrei, said it's on 11, 11 principles. Yeshayu Novi said 11 is too much. Yeshayu said it's on six. Micha came and said, no, three. Yeshayu came back and said, no, two. Finally, Bo Chavakuk ve'emidon alachas. Chavakuk came and said, it's all one. It's only one. And that one is emuna. V'tzadik ve'emunoso yichye. That we all live with emuna. Since that day of Simchas Torah, we changed as a people. The world changed. Never, ever did something happen in our modern days of such magnitude, of riches, of animalistic instinct to go and try just to destroy and devour. I think that all of our Amuna in that day increased in one way or another. We realize that we are Am Yisrael. We are by ourselves. We're not waiting for the United Nations to recognize it. Not the Hague. Not the judges around the world. <laughs> you know, on Tisha B'Av, it's interesting. Right before Tisha B'Av, which words do we read in the Haftarah prophetically? Hashiva Shavtayich Kibari Shana. Let us restore the judges as they really should be. We don't need any bigger raya, no greater proof than this Novi, what has happened uh, over the year in the nations of the world that sat in judgment over what has happened and what Eretz Yisrael in the way that was responded, the, uh, all of the riches. The, the answer that we gave, 
I think that our Amuna is what's going to hold us to the very end because the Amuna of every single person has been galvanized. Other peoples might say, my Amuna was shattered. My faith is shaky right now. But what do we see in Klal Yisrael? We see people that were here in America, soldiers that were living a great life. And all of a sudden they said, I got to go back to Israel. <laughs> I, 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 I got to go back to my troop. I got to call in. I'm a reserve. I got I to call. In. And they rushed back. They didn't walk back. They rushed back. They left families. And then you have so many people that increase their observance. Uh, regular Yidin, Amfa, began to learn more. Tehillim, two or three kapitlach every day after every tefillah. Achenu Kobes Yisrael sung throughout the entire world. All of the different nigunim that were made, particularly to boost the amuna, to boost the belief of Klau Yisrael, to know that Hashem is doing great things even at this time. And then people that were not yet religious, not observant, the call that they had to identify. I was walking down Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. A man came over, ran over to me, and he began to pat me on the arm. And he said, you know, I, I just, I, I want to know who you are. Are you a rabbi? I said, I try to be. And he says to me, uh, it's good to see you. It's good to see a fellow Jew right now. He began to cry. I don't know exactly what his story is, but that response in that interaction, I didn't get before this year's Simchas Torah. I think that everybody has moved. Everyone has moved towards emuna, towards observance. I think you find people at Chalabanks, women, Noshim Tzidkanias and girls coming in droves to be part of it, to help whatever they can do. People in Kennedy Airport here in New York rushing, bringing packages, bringing all types of bags for the soldiers and the airlines letting them go through free of charge. It's a, it's a part where we do see the Amuna and the Amuna is flourishing at this time. It's like a, a, a time of great need. From the time the sun is shining till the sun sets. I praise Hashem. The Heiling of Baal Shem Tov said, sometimes the sun is shining. Whoa, stocks went up. Everything's good. I got a raise. Things happen well. Family's going good. I praise Hashem. But the Baal Shem says there's also going to be days. There's going to be days when the sun goes down. When it's dark outside. We feel the gullus. We feel the pain. We praise Hashem. And I think that all over the world that Hashem has had such praise. There's been such a Kiddush Hashem in the response of Klai Yisrael from every point on the spectrum, it doesn't matter what. We're one. Kolonu ke'echod. We realize it's the Achdus that's going to be our survival. No one else is going to have our backs. Doesn't matter who they are. Perkei said, be careful. Be careful who you attach yourself to. Be careful who you think is going to save Klai Yisrael. Because we know, there's only one. Hashem, we have each other, we have Am Echad. And I think that that uh, has come through since the very beginning of the, uh, of the Tzara. And a lot, a lot has changed. Chayalin, putting the tzitzit on. When did you ever have a massive movement towards one mitzvah? They could not make the tzitzits fast enough. Even here in the schools, the yeshivas and the Beis Yaakov and all different beautiful schools, they're making tzitzits because they, they didn't have enough. And those 
organizations that donated in the manufacturers that donated tzitzit. Can we imagine that the chayalim were that protection with the protective garb that they have? They wear Hashem's signet ring, the tefillin that everybody has put on, the candles, the neros for Shabbat that everybody lights. I, I, I've never seen anything like it before. The Jewish heart has been set on fire. And anybody in this world who wants to come closer to Hashem, they find the right one. They find the right person to be able to connect with. Every individual at this point is crying out. We're all wanting to know how we could be better. We're all wanting to know, how could I be metakein? How could I fix myself to make myself a little bit better? I think that uh, every yid has been moved to tshuva because we realize that it's all of our achrayas. It's, it's our responsibility. And this, I think, is, uh, is something just, uh, it, it's precious about our days that we need to re always remember, achtos, that together, we have the power. Together, we are the koach of unity, could bring the geula, could bring anything, certainly could bring us the victory uh, in Eretz Yisrael over our enemies. In practical terms, how do we bottle what's happened so far? How do we bottle that emuna, put it in a, in a bottle, preserve it, and, and what would be the ingredients on that bottle of Amuna? Uh, it's a fantastic question, Amari. To bottle Amuna would be that a person remembers all the good things that have gone on, remembers uh, all of the missiles that were fired by Iran, and what had happened, we'll remember all of the people that have become closer and rose to the call of action that it will take our moon, it will take our tefillos. To put that in a bottle and remember it and to bring it out every time that it's necessary. Any time that I'm starting to forget, I got to take a look at that bottle and say, wait, I wrote down there was a nace that happened on that day. There was the commanding officer who fell on the grenade to save his troop. I'm going to remember that. Kvura, I'll remember the Mesir Nefesh. I'm going to remember all of the good chassadim that were done worldwide for a schus of people that gathered together in every place in this world to try to give suyos to Klai Yisrael. I'm going to remember that. It is something that we need to have something tangible. They put the mud and they stored it away. Why? In order that we would always remember when Chas Shalom, a person has a challenge in the area of Parnosa, of livelihood. I see the bottle of mud. <laughs> it's great. Hashem can give us the mud. Hashem can give us parnos, it doesn't matter the job, it doesn't matter the investment, it doesn't matter what went on, it doesn't matter our current level, our economic level, that's the mud. A person needs to take a look at that beauty, at that jar of emuna that people have displayed to remember all of the things. I keep on my desk a stone. I got a present. Someone said, I want to, they went to Eretz Yisrael, they said, I want to bring you back something, but I knew you wouldn't want anything, but this I know you want. It's a stone. They took it from a place where it was permissible halachically, question whether to remove a stone or not. When the things get a little bit tough, and I'm sitting here, or people come in and they tell me what their situation is, or their challenge in life. And when they leave, although I smiled when they're there, I start to cry when they leave. I always take a look at that stone. This stone, Evan Yisrael, that stone lasted a long time. 
lot, a lot of Doris, a lot of challenges, a lot of bloodshed, a lot of tears, but we live on as a people. And I think that that has to be the bottle on everybody's desk, on everybody's workplace, on everyone's table. It's a constant uh, challenge for us in our day to remember that Hashem Yisbarach has called us to a higher calling during this time. There was a uh, fascinating question by the great Rav uh, Astor of El Yoshev, Zechot Tzadik Lidrafa, Kador. There was a individual during the Holocaust and he was in charge. His brother was a person that fell asleep easily. It would be difficult to wake up. However, when the Nazis, Yimach Shemov, made a roll call in the middle of the night, there was no question. Everybody had to be up immediately outside standing at attention. And the brother took a chryas. He had to wake up his brother to make sure that he would always be on time wherever he was supposed to be. One night, it was the middle of the night, the Nazis, freezing, blew the whistle. The dogs were there. Everybody had to run out. It was a time of panic. The brother ran out. He forgot. He didn't wake up his brother. Lo aleinu, lo aleinu. Hashem yishmar v'yatzil. After the Holocaust, he survived and he asked, does he have to be constantly bothered, have this on his mind, constantly in his conscience? Or was, was his man lo normali? It wasn't normal times. So how could we expect something from a person at that time like this? There were many different answers that were given. When the question later was posed by another individual to Rebbe Yashuv, Rebbe Yashuv said, Zamanim lo normalim. When the times are not normal, Klau Yisrael is expected to be super. Lamay To be even greater during that time. So there is some culpability by this individual that he should do tshuva for what happened. I think that since Simchas Torah, we are being held to a higher level, to a higher madrega. We're being held to a madrega to realize that the world's crazy. Colleges and faculty and universities have turned on Klal Yisrael, the intelligentsia. Is that so much different from what happened years ago in Europe? And all the sanctions against Eretz Yisrael, Ibn Yisrael? <laughs> Martin Luther King once said, <laughs> when they say that they're anti-Zionist, they don't mean anti-Zionist, they mean they're anti-Jewish. Has nothing to do with Israel. I believe his words are true. And we've seen it. We've seen Jewish students have to hide. These are zmanim lo normalim. When there are those that can protest on the street, burn fires, burn the American flag, the stars and the stripes of America, where in the old days it was a law in the books that if you left your flag, you're a patriotic citizen and you fly your flag out in the front of your house. And you left it. When it began to rain, you could get a ticket. You could get a fine because you left that flag while it was raining, even though you did it because you are a patriot. And today, you can burn the flag. You can burn it to a crisp. You can dance around it and sing. And nobody will say boo. No one will say anything. Zamanim lo normalim. These are times when it's not normal. But as we know, somehow Klal Yisrael thrives during these times. Somehow we just become better. We become stronger. We become more vibrant. We become closer. We've got more emunah. 
That's what happens during this time. And that's what I see. I see it in the Kehila. I see it in Klal Yisrael. I saw it when I traveled to Eretz Yisrael and had the great schools to meet so many different people who are so strong in security personnel and soldiers. And it, it was an amazing thing. I visited the hospital. One of the people in the Tel HaShomer, so uh, the soldier kept saying, Barcheni, give me a blessing before Shalem, a blessing before, he kept repeating it. And I, I, I thought maybe I didn't say the right words, maybe I didn't give the right bracha, I and I kept trying to add a little bit more. His commander came to visit him, and he was waiting in the hall, and they came in to tell me. Immediately, I went out, and I wanted that his commanding officer should uh, visit him, and I would stay outside. The commanding officer had great derech eretz. He said, you should stay. I asked him later, why does he keep asking me again for Rufu Shalema? The officer said, he is one of my best men in the troop. He is only waiting for the moment that he can come back to fight. I thought to myself, Goldwasser, you don't even understand. You don't come up to the toes of that goddess. So I think that uh, the greatness that exists in our day is that Klal Yisrael, their Amuna, their learning, the yeshivas, the yeshivas, they made additional sedarim. Additional sedarim, they're learning uh, 18 hours. I, I don't even know how many, I'm ashamed to say how many hours. And yet they added additional sedarim to protect the soldiers. Because they know Torah magno matzla, the Torah protects and shields everyone, the soldiers on the battleground, in the front, the soldiers in the air, the soldiers at sea, Klal Yisrael, the additional learning that has taken place, Shmir Saloshin groups formed all over the place. Every day we learn Zara Shimshin, and I've added into the Shir something extra for Eretz Yisrael, at the beginning of every shear, everyone can be a part of it. Anyone can be Mishtatif who wants to daily. The Sus of the Zerashimshin. Everybody has tried to do a little bit more. I think that whatever the negative and all of the upset and the sorrow that has happened is now going to soon be replaced. Samchenu Kimosi Nisanu. We're going to rejoice as the days that we were oppressed and upset. I think it's going to be great days ahead. And I think that all of Klal Yisrael in one way are preparing for those days. We're all, you know, Rebbe Avigdor Miller, Rebbe Omora used to say, you got to prepare for the Bechina. He wasn't talking about the driver's test or the final at the end of the year or the regions. He was talking about the big test. And I think that we are all, all of us, on each and every different level, preparing for that test. Eric, I'll say you, 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 obviously you, you work with um, young people. Uh, you work in the area and have done amazing things in, in as regards to mental health. Um, how do you explain and deal with these abnormal times, specifically to younger people, and, and what's the connection for them between emuna and simcha, happiness, faith and happiness? Another uh, excellent question, Rabari. Uh, for the young people, uh, I find that especially today, they are supercharged. They are supercharged to learn about Emuna and to learn about anything to do with Kedusha and Mitzvos. Uh, Lekutim Maran says, Dor le dor yishabach ma'asecho. So usually we would take it every generation, yishabach ma'asecho, that we praise Hashem. Lekutim Maran says, Dor le dor 
with every succeeding generation, Yishabach, Loshon Shabach, your people, Hashem, improve. Dor le dor, every generation is better. The young people today are unreal. A lot of people say, no, oh, when I was little, you know, if I would have done that or what people used to do and today they're not. I, I beg to respectfully differ. I think today you got the young generation. I don't care if they're rebellious. I don't care if they're off the derech or on the derech or somewhere in between. They are fire. They want to know. They want to be close to Hashem. They want us to reach out to them and to bring them close. What I feel is that it's important to stress that emuna of two things. One, varevna, our learning, our davening, our mitzvahs, have a beautiful time. You want to daven, you like to sing, sing your davening. You like to dance, dance during your davening. You like to have Shabbos Oneg, make the greatest Shabbos Oneg. Take all the things in learning. You didn't have a good experience with this learning. It was difficult for you. So don't learn your vomus. Learn something else. Learn Navi. You're, if you like, learn Siddur, Perishat Tvilas. Learn Perkevas. Learn Nomeli Melech. Learn Vesil Whatever you like, learn it. But find the Simcha in the mitzvah. Then, once we get grounded in mitzvahs and we are surrounding ourselves with mitzvahs, it's much easier to come on to emuna, because every mitzvah gives us that attachment. The Chavetz Chaim said, take one mitzvah, grab onto that mitzvah, and that will bring you to the entire emuna. That will bring you completely to the Torah. And he explains that it's a treat to those that grab onto it. So he says the marshal, if a person does the rafting, the whitewater rafting, and all of a sudden they find themselves going down and they know before they reach the bottom, they've got to save themselves. So they see one branch overhanging. They go and they grab onto that branch. Says the Chavetz Chaim, with that one branch, they could save themselves. And so too with the mitzvahs. One mitzvah could save ourselves. A young woman called me. She's going through a lot of uh, challenges right now. She said, I, I, I don't know. It's it, it's a problem. Something happened in her life. Maybe she could do a mitzvah. What would I suggest? I said to her, could you say the Shema? Oh, that's too much. That's too much. I said to her, could you say the first paragraph? I, 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 I can't. I said to her, could you say the first line? Maybe the second. Just the two lines. Could you say it? <laughs> she said, I think I could. I said, well, I want you to know, according to many, that's the whole mitzvah. You say those two lines. You got it. You're a mitzvah girl. She laughed. I think that we have to realize that the young people are, they're so special. They're our guarantors. And to love them and to hold them close, not to be critical, to be praise, praising them for anything they do. It is right now a time when anything that anybody does is the Akara Metzius. It's very valuable. The second uh, idea we try to get across to the young is that everything that happens, as Rabbi al Khodan Wasserman, Zechat Tzadik Livrapa, says, is a long chain that goes from Shemayim to Aretz. When something happens down here, I get all upset. Uh, I lost a few dollars, Chasa Shalom. Uh, by accident, this happened. I missed the uh, important the meeting, whatever it is. So I get all blown out of shape or this person insulted me and I'm upset. I realize it's just part of the long chain. It's the, the last little link. I've got to realize that it happened in a Shemayim. When I realize that way, 
I can begin to understand it's not so simple. I have to try to find the simcha in everyday life. I just had a wonderful man. He's a yedid of mine. Yeruchim Rivlin. He's a tzaddik. He came from Eretz Yisrael. He lost two sons in one day. Two sons in one day. I was with him a couple of days here in New York. The simcha that he has, the smile that he wears on his face, the way he talks about what has happened, is that it's a person that has deep emuna. If he went through such a thing, and he can walk away with his emuna intact, and be besimcha, it's a lesson for all of us. We should be besimcha. Not every day is an easy time. As it says in Mizmor Shir, Liyom HaShabbos, Ve'emunascha Baleilos. The emuna is at night when you can't see, when you have no idea why did this happen, for what reason, how do I put this in perspective? It is all a question of a person realizing that the Boreolum is doing great things in this world. We may, may not be able to understand it right now, but in the future, as it says, the last words in the Torah, according to the great Rebbe of Piyasatzna, Ko Yisrael. We'll be able to understand everything. Our eyes will be enlightened and we'll know many things and many reasons that we've been waiting for. He, in fact, ties it to the beginning of the Torah, where in the very beginning it says, Breshis bara Elohim midasadin, the divine attribute of strict justice. When that happens, it's very, very disconcerting. It's difficult for us. But we should know, Le'ene ko Yisrael. At the end, we will all understand. At the end, every one of us will have the full idea and knowledge of the events of the world and why they transpired. As it says, that the world be full with knowledge like the waters cover the sea. Rabbi Kolosi, you mentioned, um, and we see it, whether it's in, in, in Israel, in the United States, Jewish communities around the world, that there is a a tremendous um, longing and interest in in spirituality, in understanding what Judaism is all about, getting back to to the to the Jewish roots. Um, what can the average person do? And I, as I speak to to people on you know who are rabbanim rabbis who are working on the college campuses, they're seeing this tremendous spike in 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 in, in interest and in activities and events. What can the average layperson, what should the average layperson do when it comes to outreach and Kiruv, if, if there's such an opportunity today? Ravari, do we have a couple hours for the answer on this one? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just got to say, I'll make it brief. Uh, Rabbi Avigdor Miller said, every yid is an opportunity. If you got a mortgage in a house, don't think you just got a mortgage in the house because you're just a good guy. You might be a good guy, you might be a good lady, but next door, there could be a neighbor that is not observant. The reason Hashem gave you the mortgage is in order that you should be able to reach out and bring them into your house and invite them for a suda, for Purim, for Pesach, for whatever. The reason that we got our job, oh, I got a job, I work in a corporation. The reason is, is because we're going to have a workmate. The workmate is not observant. And it's our job to reach out to him. It is a, a responsibility that we all have. Dovina Melech says in Tehillim, How gave mine I cried. I cried tears over those that are not religious, over those that are not yet observant. 
I think that we have to mobilize ourselves and realize I can't wait anymore for others to reach out. I've got to do it myself. If you go on the plane and the yid sits next to you, who's not observant, and you have a kosher meal uh, ordered, and uh, the yid says, uh, I see that you eat kosher. <laughs> you say, yeah, I've always been kosher, and that's the end of it. No, it's a Pesach. It's an opening. You can make a whole sicha out of it. You can start to bring him in, offer him some food. Do you, do you eat kosher? Here, take some of this. I'm sure you're going to love this uh, airline meal, whatever. Uh, it's all an opportunity. You're waiting on the line and you see a yid. Go over and give him shalom. Go over and say, how are you? Ask him a little bit about himself or herself. Get to know them. The way that we have of bringing everyone in is in today's world, there exists a thirst. Don't You don't have to be shy about asking another person about going over and giving shalom. My great Rebbe, Rav Simcha Wasserman, Sechret Tzadik, Kadoshatar Livracha, said that if you go into pure oxygen in an atmosphere and you light a match, it all goes in flames. Today, there is pure oxygen in the air. All you have to do is light a match and your fellow yid will be on fire for Yiddishkeit because everybody is holding in that place. I have a Talmida from a number of years ago and no Kiruv, no Chino, just went straight into a... Uh, a corporation. It works in the city, works in Manhattan. I got a call from her one time. She said, do you think it would be okay? I make kugel very well. She's a, She bakes kugel. Do you think I could bring in a kugel? Do you think they would laugh at me if I brought it in for some of my workmates? I said, I don't think they'd laugh. I think they'd be appreciative. Take it in on Arab Shabbos. Te'ima, to'amel. She said, okay. She took it in. Gone. Next week, she asked me. I never asked about if they should say a bracha. Do I have to tell them to say a bracha? I said, make a card with a bracha in Hebrew, transliterated, also translated into English. Leave it up and have the people choose to say the bracha. They did. It grew. People from other offices came. They also wanted kugel. The number of kugels that were made Thursday night began to increase. People from other floors heard about the kugel, all kinds of people, and they came flooding. Fashtikel kugel on an Arab Shabbos. Look what this shy timid girl did in outreach. It's huge. It's a secure organization. Look what she did. All of us, we have to be creative. We can do it. That is our job. It's equus of the Mashiach. We've got to reach out. There are a lot of people that they don't even know the Yid. They're born Jewish, but that's about it. They never celebrate it. Some never entered into a shul. Some never saw the inside of a Sefer Torah. Some never lived Hanukkah Menorah. Some never ate Matzah and Pesach. It is today our job. It's the calling of Ikhmas of the Mashiach to try to reach out wherever and whenever we can. Go out of your comfort zone. Say hello. Start a conversation, even if it's not your teva. You will have a yid on your cheshbon that it says in the svarim, if I do a mitzvah, so whatever I thought, whatever I was thinking, if I was excited to do the mitzvah, I get the star. If I wasn't so excited, so I get the star for not being so excited. However, when I'm a car of a yid, every time that Jew will do a mitzvah, Keep Shabbos, make a bracha over the kugel, put a coin in the pushkin, the kupa. 
Anytime that ye will do a mitzvah, it's on my cheshbon. They tell me, you got another mitzvah. It is huge. Kiru, to reach out. Ein gedolo mizu. There isn't anything greater. And it helps that the world should be more inspired and that we will increase the number of Hidden. The Novi said, it's our job. Everybody, every child, every adult, no matter who, no matter what their background, no matter what their education, no matter what their capabilities are, physical, mental, no matter. Everybody should be part of the learning experience. Um Concluding thoughts, uh, I, go on. I, I really would prefer for this to go on for hours and hours and, and hear it all, but um, time is almost up. Uh, any concluding thoughts uh, that you'd like to give to us? I tell you the truth, Rav Svadron told me, it's like you're in that if I have a thought that comes to my mind, I should say it out. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. Sometimes it's okay. <laughs> I would just, it, it came into my mind. Children and parents come together. Even if there's a child that has become distanced from a parent, an adult child, doesn't matter. Forget about the past. Things are happening too quickly today. Make a call. Text. Reach out to your parent. Parent, reach out to your son, to your daughter. Reach out to a cousin. Reach out to an aunt or an uncle. Maybe there was a sifsum. Maybe there was a dispute. So how long are we going to cry over the dispute? It was your fault. It was my fault. It was everybody's fault. Put all of these things aside. Parents and children, I don't care what your reasons are. I don't care what your excuse is. I don't care what happened in the past. Everybody come together. That is the calling for our generation, that we should know the agmas nefesh that a parent has when their child is not in touch, or the agmas nefesh that a child has when their parent is not in touch. It is particularly, for me, gratifying personally, to be on Sparks of History, to utilize this angle of the media to be Marba Kavod Shamayim, to bring the word of Hashem, the Devar Hashem, to all the points on the globe. Rabbi, I am jealous of you, Kina Saifri, that you have this ability to do such a unbelievable job in getting the word out. Hashem Yisbarach should bench you to continue doing all of your work for Klal Yisrael and have all that you need. Thank you so much. And uh, Goldwasser, in, in reciprocating, Hashem should give the Rav, the Koach, to go from Chayel to Chayel, from strength to strength, and all the wonderful work. And we should, uh, as the Rav said, very soon see uh, beautiful days ahead. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.